Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, our topic is fluid balance, in which we will be discussing how fluid is distributed in the body, fluid volume excess, fluid volume deficit, and clinical assessment of fluid balance. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. What is fluid balance? The balance of input and output of fluids in the body to allow metabolic process to function correctly. How fluid is distributed inside the body? 60% of the body weight of a typical adult consists of fluid and this body fluid is located in two fluid compartments. One is intracellular space that is fluid in the cells and other is extracellular space that is fluid outside the cells. This 60% of the body fluid is distributed in two different proportions. One is intracellular fluid which is two-third of the body fluid and the other is extracellular fluid which is one-third of the body fluid. This image will make it more clear adult body weight comprising 40% of solids and 60% of fluids. This 60% of fluids is further distributed as two-thirds of intracellular fluid comprising 70% and one-third of extracellular fluid comprising 30%. This 30% of extracellular fluid is further distributed as 22% of interstitial fluid, 6% of intravascular fluid and 2% of transcellular fluid. For your easy remembrance, you can use the mnemonic IIT for extracellular space that is intravascular, interstitial and transcellular fluid. Let's discuss them one by one. Intravascular fluids are fluids within the blood vessels. They comprise 3 liters of plasma and 3 liters of erythrocytes, leukocytes and thrombocytes totally comprising 6 liters of blood volume. Interstitial space contains the fluid that surrounds the cells and totals about 11 to 12 liters in adults. The transcellular space is the smallest division of the ECF compartment and contains approximately 1 liter, for example, cerebrospinal fluid, pericardial fluid, synovial fluid, intraocular fluid, pleural fluid, sweat and digestive secretions. How is total body fluid distributed age-wise? 80% of body weight in the infant is made of fluids, 60% of body weight in the adult is made of fluids and 45 to 55% of body weight in the old age is made of fluids. Body water declines throughout life and is generally around 45% of total body mass in old age. A fluctuation of 5 to 10% can have a serious impact on health. Body fluid normally moves between intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid in an effort to maintain the equilibrium between the spaces. Loss of fluid from the body can disrupt this equilibrium. Now, let's discuss average recommended daily input and output of fluid. Water gain equal to water loss. The average daily intake of water is 2500 ml out of which 1500 ml of water comes from beverages, 750 ml of water in moist food and 250 ml of water of metabolism. The average daily output of water is 2500 ml out of which 1500 ml is water lost in urine, 700 ml is water lost through skin and lungs, 150 ml water lost in feces and 150 ml water lost in sweat. Now let's look into body fluid transport. Body fluid is transported through different ways such as diffusion, osmosis, filtration, hydrostatic pressure and osmolality. Diffusion is the movement of molecules from higher concentration to lower concentration. For example, oxygen and carbon dioxide dissolved in water are exchanged by diffusion in the lungs. Osmosis is movement through semi-permeable membrane from higher concentration to lower concentration. In the body, water moves through semi-permeable membrane of cells from one compartment of the body to another by a process called osmosis. For example, in kidneys, osmosis ensures that the molecules of waste as well as excess water in the body are filtered and expelled from the body. 
Next is filtration, which is movement from high hydrostatic pressure to low hydrostatic pressure. Filtration allows the kidney to filter 180 liter of plasma per day. Organs of fluid loss include kidneys, lungs, skin, and gastrointestinal tract. Regarding kidneys, daily urine volume in the adult ranges between 1 to 2 liters and approximately 1 ml of urine per kg per hour in all age groups. Regarding lungs, the lungs normally eliminate water vapor at a rate of approximately 300 ml every day. The loss is much greater with increased respiratory rate or depth or in a dry climate. Fluid loss through skin is by sweating which ranges between 0 to 1000 ml or more every hour depending upon the weather changes. The chief solutes in sweat are sodium, chloride and potassium. Continuous water loss by evaporation approximately 600 ml per day occurs through the skin as insensible perspiration, a non-visible form of water loss. In GI tract, Fluid loss usually ranges between 100 to 200 ml daily. Bulk of fluid is normally reabsorbed in the small intestine. Diarrhea and fistulas cause large losses. Next comes homeostatic mechanism. The body is equipped with remarkable homeostatic mechanism to keep the composition and volume of body fluid within the normal limits. Homeostatic mechanism is nothing but adjustment of physiological systems within the body. Organs involved in homeostasis include kidneys, lungs, heart, adrenal glands, parathyroid glands, and pituitary gland. Next comes fluid volume disturbances, hypovolemia or fluid volume deficit. What do we mean by hypovolemia? Fluid output exceeds the fluid intake. Hypovolemia refers to the loss of extracellular fluid. Hypovolemia generally means low blood volume. When untreated, hypovolemia can lead to shock. Severe hypovolemia, 40% or more of intravascular volume loss may lead to hypovolemic shock. Next, causes of hypovolemic shock. Causes include vomiting, diarrhea, gastrointestinal suctioning, sweating, decreased fluid intake, third space fluid shifts. In general, when fluid loss exceeds normal level, we become dehydrated or hypovolemic. Other causes include internal bleeding, blunt traumatic injury, diabetic insipidus, intestinal obstruction, adrenal insufficiency, osmotic diuresis, and hemorrhage. Next, pathophysiology of hypovolemia. Decreased blood volume, that is, intravascular volume, may cause decreased venous return, that is, Blood drainage back to the heart decreases the preload. This causes further decreased stroke volume, that is, amount of blood pumped by the left ventricle with each beat. So further, cardiac output is decreased, that is, amount of blood that heart pumps per minute. This finally leads to tissue perfusion. Next comes signs and symptoms of fluid volume deficit. Early symptoms include fatigue. Nausea, headache, profuse sweating, dizziness. Cardiovascular symptoms include tachycardia, hypotension, postural hypotension, diminished peripheral pulse, decreased central venous pressure, dysrhythmias. Respiratory symptoms include increased rate and depth of respiration, dyspnea. Neuromuscular symptoms include lethargy to coma. Fever, depending on the amount of fluid loss, skeletal muscle weakness. Renal symptoms include decreased urine output. Integumentary symptoms include dry skin or pale skin, poor turgor, dry mouth. Gastrointestinal symptoms include decreased motility, diminished bowel sounds, constipation, thirst, decreased body weight. Laboratory findings of hypovolemia or fluid volume deficit include increased serum osmolality, increased hematocrit, increased blood urea nitrogen level, increase in serum sodium level, and increased urinary specific gravity. Next comes hypovolemia management. Identify and treat the underlying cause of hypovolemia. 
Emergency management includes oxygen administration, intravenous fluid administration to replace the lost fluid. Medical management includes antidiarrheal drugs, antimicrobial drugs, antiemetic drugs and antipyretic medications as prescribed to correct the cause and treat any symptoms. Next, oral rehydration therapy, IV fluids, for example, hypotonic solution, example 3% sodium chloride, hypotonic solution, example 0.45% sodium chloride, 5% dextrose, isotonic solution, example 0.9% sodium chloride, lactated ringer solution, colloid solution, example dextran and blood transfusion. Next, nursing management of hypovolemia. Monitor the hemodynamic status and vital signs. Check body weight. Monitor intake output chart. Assess skin turgor and mucosa. Check the mental status. Check capillary refill. Monitor electrolyte level. Next, nursing diagnosis for hypovolemia. Fluid volume deficient related to electrolyte and acid base imbalances, fluid shifts, edema or effusion inadequate fluid intake, vomiting, bleeding, and diarrhea, etc. Next, hypervolemia or fluid volume excess. Hypervolemia, also called fluid overload, is a condition in which the liquid portion of blood is too high. Hypervolemia is an excess of isotonic fluid that is water and sodium in the extracellular compartment. Causes of fluid volume excess. Diminished homeostatic mechanisms, that is, heart failure, cirrhosis, hepatitis, kidney failure, nephrotic syndrome, high salt diet. Next, clinical manifestations of hypervolemia or fluid volume excess. Cardiovascular symptoms include tachycardia, hypertension, distended neck and hand veins, increased central venous pressure, dysrhythmias. Respiratory symptoms include increased rate and depth of respiration, that is shallow respiration, dyspnea, crackles on auscultation. Neuromuscular symptoms include altered level of consciousness, headache, visual disturbances, skeletal muscle weakness, paresthesias. Renal symptoms include increased urine output if kidneys can compensate, decreased urine output if kidney damage is the cause. And integumentary symptoms include pitting edema, pale, cool skin. Gastrointestinal symptoms include increased motility, diarrhea, liver enlargement, ascites, increased body weight. Laboratory findings of hypervolemia or fluid volume excess includes decreased serum osmolality, decreased hematocrit, decreased blood urea nitrogen level, decreased serum sodium and potassium level, and decreased urinary specific gravity. Next, management of hypervolemia or fluid volume excess. Identify and treat the underlying cause of hypervolemia. Management includes restriction of sodium and fluid intake, administration of medications, oxygen administration, if there is renal failure, hemodialysis or continuous renal replacement therapy is done. Medical management includes diuretics, that is thiazide diuretics and loop diuretics. Digoxin for heart failure, morphine and nitroglycerin for pulmonary edema, potassium supplements in case of hypokalemia. Untreated hypervolemia can cause severe complications like pericarditis or swelling of the heart tissues, heart failure, delayed wound healing, tissue breakdown, decreased bowel function. Nursing management of hypervolemia includes monitoring hemodynamic status, check the body weight, monitor intake output chart hourly, check the mental status, monitor electrolyte level, watch for distended veins in the hands or neck, Monitor ABG results for changes in acid-base balance, grading edema, and measure the abdominal girth in case of ascites. Provide oral hygiene and skin care. Use the infusion pump for administering medication to prevent fluid overload. Assess for bounding peripheral pulse and S3 signs of fluid overload. Elevate edematous extremities and handle with care. 
Use anti-embolic stockings or bandages as ordered. Nursing diagnosis for hypervolumia is fluid volume excess related to decreased cardiac output, liver disease, excessive sodium intake, renal insufficiency. So this is all about fluid balance, excess or deficit. If you find this video useful, please like it, subscribe it, share it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.